Tonight we're going to solve some exponential equations, and you're thinking to yourself, exponential equations, we already solved these about a week ago using a method called common bases. Well, tonight we're going to introduce a more powerful, dynamic, and more versatile method to solving an exponential equation using a logarithm. So just a real quick recap here of the two methods, we've, the one you've seen already, then the second one you're going to see tonight. Uh, the one you did already was called the method of common bases. And uh, you're probably wondering, what the heck, I, 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 this sounds vaguely familiar, but I really can't remember too much about it. Do you remember having like 8 to the x plus 2 equals 16 raised to like the 2x minus 1 power? And you rewrote the 8 as 2 cubed. Do you remember doing that? And you rewrote the 16 as 2 to the 4th so that you were able to get the same base on both sides. And then you, then you went from there. And so hopefully that strikes up your, your memory bank there. Now today's method is going to be a logarithmic approach to solving an exponential. And like I said, it's going to be more versatile. So this is a common basis. It's a great method, but it's very limited in the sense that we had to have very friendly cooperative bases. If I change the 16 to an 18, guess what? We're up a creek without the paddle. You know, we got nothing. There's no way you could rewrite 16 so that it has a base 2 just like the other side did. Where the logarithmic approach is going to be very versatile and it's going to be capable of solving any and all exponential equations. Well, there's two real big keys here today, uh, which keeps it really simple. But key number one is we have to be, we have to know and appreciate that third logarithmic law that we did the other day called the power law. All right, and then um, once we know the power law, then we're just going to turn everything over to the calculator. So we're going to have that rascal very handy. And we're going to do a lot of our work on the calculator tonight. But just remember that power, what the heck did the power law say? He said if we have log base b of x raised to the y power, we could rewrite it as y times log base b of x. And we're just basically saying that that exponent can take a trip from the exponent down to the coefficient and move them down there. So we're, our first example, we're going to ta attack it using both methods and uh, just to kind of ease into our new one tonight. So we're going to say, we're going to take 4 to the x, and they're saying it's equal to 8. I'm going to rewrite it using base 2 on each side. Uh, we're going to substitute 2 squared for the 4 and 2 cubed for the 8. And we could say, well, 2x equals 3 because we, since we had the same base, we killed the bases. And x simply equals 3 halves. So, you know, go, we already know what the answer should be. Now let's practice our new approach here. Um, again, I'm just going to rewrite the equation. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take the log of both sides. In other words, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And you're sitting at home right now wondering why, why these logs are driving me crazy. Why am I taking the log of both sides? Um, well, we're, because we can use that third rule where the exponent becomes the coefficient, so it's x times the log of 4 equals the log of 8. And you notice when I did take the log of both sides, it was my choice as to which kind of a log I used. And I used a common log that had that invisible base 10 there. Now what I'm going to do is, I, again, I'm trying to get the x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 4 so that these guys right here cancel out. x equals the log of 8 divided by the log of 4, and that's where you grab your calculator, and we're just going to plug it into the calculator and see what we get. And my calculator did indeed confirm that the answer is 1.5. Remember, the log button is on the left-hand column, just to the left of the 7 button, and just remember to use a closing parenthesis after you type in the, the 8 before you divide, and we get 1.5, which again, of course, that's equivalent to 3 divided by 2. So what's the big deal with this power log rule? You know, what's, what's the big deal about law number three? What is the beauty of this law? And you probably have your own answer to this question, um, but I'm going to keep it purely mathematical here. The beauty is you can remove the variable from the exponent. And that's what we're really trying to accomplish. Remove the variable from the exponent uh, if you take a look at that one you just solved, we started off with an x in the exponent, and by taking the log of both sides and using this power law, we we're able to move the x down in front, and it was no longer in the exponent. So this is really the big theme for today. 
All right, we're going to dive in with three real quick examples here. Again, you'll notice the theme is the same. We're going to take the log of both sides. Uh, whatever you do to one side, we'll do to the other. Uh, it is like I used on the other one. I'm always going to use log base 10. If I didn't use log base 10, then I wouldn't be allowed to use my calculator and I'd be in trouble. Once I take the log of both sides, we're going to use the, the power rule where the x comes down in front. And then we're just going to divide both sides by the log of 5. So it probably seems a little strange right now with a little bit more practice will be really strong. I'm going to just go to the calculator here and type in the log of 18, close my parentheses, divided by, let's see, the log of 5. And I got x equals 1 point, let's see, they wanted nearest hundredth, so I got to go two decimals. Well, it was supposed to be uh, 7958, I'm going to go 1.80, I'm going to round up. Uh, B, log of both sides, and we haven't officially jotted down all of our steps, so maybe you want to make a little checklist off to the side of your notebook, you know, step number one, take the log of both sides, step number two, use your uh, power rule, so the x is a multiple in front, and last but not least, we're going to divide both sides by the log of four. You notice this is a very quick, efficient technique, and um, and again, like we said earlier, we don't have to wait for the bases to become the same. It's a much more versatile pro technique. I got 3.32 for that one. All right, the third one. Hey, great chance to try this one on your own. Go ahead and hit pause and, and get rid of me for a few moments. Take the log of both sides. Use my product or my power rule. Notice that all night, I've been, my, I, my brain keeps wanting to say product when it's the power law. Divide both sides by the log of 2, and the calculator says log of, let's see, 1560 divided by the log of 2, 10.61, uh, 10.61, so good practice there rounding. We had to, it was 10.607, yada, yada, and I had to round up to the 1. Okay, as the problems get a little more complicated here, I'm going to really put a high emphasis, a high premium on using our parentheses. So my first step is the same. I want you to go ahead and we're going to take the log of both sides. Now just a real quick recap here. How do you even know that this is an exponential equation? You know, because you'll notice there's nothing in the directions here uh, that said it was exponential. Uh, but of course, you do see the variable hiding in the exponent. And that's what right there tells you this we're working with an exponential equation. We're gonna take and you know we're gonna do what we're doing now is take the log of both sides. Now when I use my power rule, the exponent is x plus three. It has to be in parentheses. That is absolutely mandatory. Um, so now I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 6. Just like everything we do in math, we, our work needs to be very crisp and clean and well organized. And um, let's see, the log of 50 divided by the log of 6. I got 2.18, yada, yada. Uh, but what I do is I, I don't want you to round that number off yet. I want you to store it in alpha A. And I'll just make a little note here that I had 2.18-ish. Uh, with a dot, 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 and I stored it in alpha A. I then subtracted 3 from both sides, and I got x is equal to negative 0.82. Uh, I had to round up to the 2 there. Okay, let's go get part B. Again, let's go ahead and we'll take the log of both sides. So we've got the log of 1.03 raised to this crazy x divided by 2 minus 5 power. I don't know if they could make the exponent hardly any more obnoxious. Now here's the most important thing I want you to do is make sure when you bring that exponent down, you're using parentheses around that quantity. Oh, I forgot the log right there. Hopefully you guys were screaming at me in the background. Let's divide both sides by the log of 1.03. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. Okay, let's say that x divided by 2 minus 5 is equivalent to alpha b. Now, what was my alpha b? 
My alpha B was approximately 23.449, yada, yada, yada. But because it's not my final answer, I am not allowed to round that off prematurely. I've got to store it. So then I'm just going to add 5 to both sides. So I'm telling my calculator alpha B plus 5, which is about 68-ish. And I'll store that in alpha C. 4, 3, 4 ish, okay? And then I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2. And I've got 136. And like I said, I, I hope you're doing, you know, try this on the calculator. Make sure, don't take this button pushing for granted. Make sure you know how to do it. And there's my final answer. All right, now we're going to jump into some word problems and we're going to tie together uh, today's topic with something we did earlier in the week. Um, with exponential growth and decay. And here, here's an example of how they could slightly tweak the wording um, compared to something we already know and that's near and dear to our heart. But uh, they said quantity Q is known to increase by a fixed percentage known as P. Um, it's in decimal form, of course. And Q can be modeled by this crazy function. Q sub zero represents the amount of Q present at T equals zero. And of course, T is in time. Now, I hope that sounds familiar because we studied exponential growth earlier. And we used an equation that looked like this. Notice, so they're using slightly different letters in certain places, but they're equivalent. It's, and this is what they do. They do have the freedom to change the wording on us a little bit. Um, you know, R is equivalent to P. A is equivalent to Q sub zero. Uh, y is equal to Q sub T. They're all equivalent. They all mean the same thing. So let's see if we could use this more, slightly more complicated form and apply it to a problem. So here's, the, here's our crazy problem. We've got a biologist who is modeling the population of bats on a tropical island. Uh, makes you think of warmer weather, doesn't it? Uh, now when he first starts observing, there are 104 bats. So that number right there is going to be my original amount, which is going to go in for Q sub zero. Now the biologist believes that the bat population is growing at a rate of 3%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to move the decimal two times to the left and I'm going to substitute 0 0.03 in for my P. So let's say that B of T, notice I changed my Q to a B just because they requested that I do so. Um, if I write that as a function, it's going to be 104 times 1 plus... 0 0.03 and you certainly you can add those together and we'll just get we'll just say b of t is 104 times 1.03 raised to the t now very important that you stop right there do not make this note okay or i say do make this note do not multiply the 104 times the 103 and the reason that's illegal is because the 103 has a power up here and you're not allowed to multiply those two rascals all right, part B, using your equation from part A, algebraically determine the number of years it'll take for the bat population to reach 200. So let's substitute 200 in for the Q of T part. So let's say 200 equals 104 times 1.03 to the T power. This is an exponential equation because the unknown amount is the exponent, your variable's up there. Let's divide both sides by 104 and see what we get. I got 1.923 dot dot dot, so I'm going to store that in alpha A. And uh, I think I, I prefer the way I put it on this screen compared to the last screen where I kind of showed my number with the dot dot dot. And the dot 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 implies that the number is a never ending decimal. And of course, I stored it. Uh, so now I could say I'm going to take the log of both sides. Now I could say log of A equals t times the log of 1.03. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone. I, I took the log of both sides and I used my power rule all at once. Now I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 1.03. Notice we are very calculator intensive here. So just type it in very carefully. Um, I, hopefully I typed it in correctly. My, and I get, I'm getting a very reasonable answer. Uh, we're going to round to the nearest year, so that would be year number 22. It's going to take about 22 years for the bat population to reach 200. Okay, so we're talking money here. Everybody likes to talk about money. Um, unfortunately, the stock is declining, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my exponential, uh, not my growth, but my decay formula, so it's 1 minus R to the T. And um, the stock started 
at an original price of twenty-two fifty. And then and then it declines uh, at a rate of point or five percent. So I'm going to write one uh, point oh five. And now here we're ready to solve the problem. Now the they want to know how many weeks will it take for the price to drop all the way to ten dollars. So that's going to be my y value. I'm going to substitute the ten into there. And you'll notice just like earlier in the video, we are solving an exponential equation where the variable is in the exponent. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by twenty two fifty. That gave me 0.4 repeating on the left side equals 0.95 raised to the t. And now I'm going to take um, the log of both sides. So I've got the log of 0.444 repeating. Again, that is definitely stored. And I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to use my power rule where I bring the exponent down. And now I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 0.95. So I've got uh, log of alpha A divided by the log of 0.95. And when I did the division on my calculator, it said 15.8096739. So very calculator intensive. Let's see, where did they want me rounding here? I'm guessing nearest week. Um, determine the number of weeks, it says. So let's go, um, oh yeah, round to the nearest week. Okay. Round to the nearest week. So we're going to say it's going to take approximately 16 weeks for the stock price to drop all the way to $10. And we don't like our stocks dropping, but sometimes they do. Okay, for our wrap-up tonight, our final discussion, we return to evaluating logs using our calculator. And since the calculator only has base 10, and there actually is one other one, and we're, we're going to talk about that later, um, we're going to really work on converting everything to base 10. So they said, I want you to consider log base 5 of 70. Let's just set it equal to x. We'll say it's equivalent to something, right? Let's go around the world and convert it to exponential. Let's say 5 raised to the x equals 70. That's always a legal move, right? And then we could just do everything that we did tonight. We're going to take the log of both sides, move the x down. And then we'll divide both sides by the log of 5. So whatever the log of 70 divided by the log of 5 is. Now, a few nights ago, especially when we were doing the graphing, I introduced a totally new thing to you called the change of base. Whoops. I'm going to slide the page up. Do you remember the change of base rule? The change of base rule is going to accomplish the same thing. It's just an ulterior um, option. So when we said x equals log base 5 of 70, we could just say, well, that's the log of 70 divided by the log of 5 using change of base. And you'll notice it did give me the same answer that I had there in pink. And we've actually already gotten ahead of ourselves, and we've actually already solved the equation, which is exactly what they asked us to do in B, so we've already accomplished that. So number one rule tonight, uh, just know that this is a second option to the common base method. We're going to take the log of both sides, use uh, our third law, the, which is called the power law, allows us to move the exponent down to the coefficient, and you are good to go.